Yo, 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 guys, <coughs> yo, guys, yo, guys, yo, guys, yo, guys, it's Old Man Tree here back again with another pre-match review. Now, actually, this is actually, um, this is a pre-recording, actually, but stay with me, guys, stay with me. I want to try and do more of these because I feel like the only way I'm going to be able to get more content out there is if I pre-record some of these streams because I don't have the time necessarily sometimes to go live. So before we get into it, if you are new to the channel, remember to like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio, follow on Twitter and we are on Ads Next, smash the notification button, follow us on Twitch, etc, etc, etc. So this is basically a pre-recorded, it should go, by the time it goes live, um, the starting lineup um, will, will be out for kickoff, people can see, oh, oh this, I predict, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, we are playing leads again so quick and I've always said that it's always, it's never a good idea to play um, two teams twice so close together. You know, it, it is a, it is a little bit of a problem. Um, it happened with Crystal Palace. You know, we played them quite close together and we end up getting four points. Um, I'm hoping that will be the same case of Leeds, that we will get four points, that we will go to Edinburgh, which will be a very, very difficult ground. Leeds fans will be up for it. There is that in-court rivalry there, I say more so from Leeds than it is from Manchester United fans. Um, but Manchester United do need to get a result here. Um, and we've obviously other results, um, you know, Newcastle drawing, Chelsea drawing, um, Arsenal drawing, and Spurs losing. Um, a win here, I think, you know, really gives us because at the end of the day, top four and ideally a trophy is the is the is the ex expectation for this season. So we win the game and suddenly Manchester United are probably seven points clear of Spurs to in fifth place. And we need to continue to create, uh, make that gap. For Personally, I still think United will get top four because I just think Spurs are just too inconsistent. Liverpool are nowhere to be seen. Um, and Chelsea, enough said, you know, so I think that we should still get it. But I just want to be comfortable. I want to be I want to be comfortable in top four, you know, and and, and we can and, and then we can build on whatever the next season, especially with the rumors of new owners, etc., which we'll probably have a show about this week. Um, how do I think the Manchester United will approach the game? Obviously, Ten Hag has said in his press conference that Anthony and Martial are not going to be available. Wan Bissaka looks like he should be back from um, illness. Um, Casimir is obviously serving his um, second of his three match ban. Obviously, he won't. He will be um, out for Leicester, and then he'll be and be back. But with the Barcelona um, coming up, he'll be he'll be back. Obviously, Bar Barcelona. Um, we still have McTominay out. Um, uh, so yeah, you know, I think you're not going to see a dissimilar team, um, to what we've seen before, to be quite honest. Um, you know, which may be good or bad, but <clears throat> I do want to say one thing and that I think it was very, very, I was very surprised by the amount of, um, I don't know, negativity after Leeds game. I don't know whether that was because people were, had the belief that we were in a title race, which I never believed. Um, and I've said this several times that United cannot be in a title race this season for the sheer, sheer fact their squad depth is not, it's not, it's not big enough. It's not, you know, you cannot tell me that signing Weghorst and Sabitzer on loan is good enough to mount a title challenge when we have, when, when you know that we're going to pick up so many injuries. This happens all the time when, because when you add in the World Cup as well, 
we just got it a little bit earlier, but this tends to happen mid to late February, March, good time. We pick up these injuries. And at the end of the day, if you want to do anything significant in a league, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. <laughs> That's what she said. That's the case. Yeah, that, that is the case. And unfortunately, Manchester is in a situation where the squad is down to the bare bones. Pretty much every midfielder is out. McTominay, um, uh, Van der Beek, uh, Eriksen, Casimir obviously has been suspended. Obviously, though he'll come back the three games. Um, but that didn't that frankly, as much as I back Casimir, frankly, that didn't help us. I didn't help that didn't that didn't help us at all. You know, so you've got to try and be calm next time. Um, already down as a squad as it is. Um, you know, as far as the forwards play, Martial is just is just he just can't play. He can't, he's made a glass, he cannot play. Anthony now looks like he's picked up something, which isn't great, you know. So these things are coming, and we're having to rely on a lot of these players who played games week in, week out, the likes of Rashford, um, Fred, uh, Fred, um, and so on. You know, we're relying on these players to continuously play week in, week out. And of course, I'm not necessarily going to have their best games, you know. So yeah, I hope I'm hoping for a positive result, but I'm also hoping that like United fans can maybe take a little bit of a chill pill um, and be a bit more realistic. This season is not the season to compete for a league title or major trophy. This season is to establish the squad, okay, to uh, and to establish the starting eleven. Sorry, to then begin to build a squad and obviously secure top four, um, so that um, our new owners and our new owners are coming will come and, and, and come into a club that will be a Champions League competing club, not a club that's you know freaking. Um, Irrelevant or back in your pre, but a Champions League club that they can invest in heavily and take United to the next level, you know. So it is what it is. Um, so let's move on here. So let's go into starting 11. So obviously, I think that I think De Gea will go and go. We're not interacting with you guys, but I will, at the same time, there is a sort of a semblance of, of, of this, you know. So, um, tranquility. Um, so yeah, De Gea will go and go, no doubts about that. Um, the Lisandro um, and Varane partnership is just is is, is solid. We don't. Have, I think Varane, as far as where is fit, so it'll be Lisandro and Varane. Um, I think Shaw, obviously, will start over Malasia. Um, then now you know you have um, you know uh, a choice between Dallo or Wabasaka. Um, now, to be honest, I actually have no. I mean, Dallo is clearly a bit rusty. And I think he going for he's better. But the thing is, I just feel like away from home at Ellen Road, I would bring Wambasaka back in. Wambasaka has improved actually going forward, um, but defensively as well. Like I think we need a bit of that. I think that's what, one thing that we kind of lacked a little bit against Leeds, you know. So, and that's not not Dallo's fault, but I just think that away from home, we just need a little bit more defensive stability. I don't think Leeds. Um, are going to be particularly good in the air and Leeds are going to concede goals. So I think if we can be better than defensively, you know, we'll win the game. Um, you know, because let's keep it a stack. Leeds scored their goals because of our mistakes more than anything. You know, we were, we were, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, they didn't have their mistakes, but they scored because of, of our mistakes. We weren't switched on two times the first half. They came at us, boom, gone in. You know, we need to be more alert. And that's the key thing this game. Now, in the midfield is where it gets interesting. A lot of people want Fred to be dropped. And for that, I say, well, who plays here? People want to try Lindelof at CDM. I, I just don't see why you want to experiment. Um, Sabitza has played there more than um, than Lindelof has. Um, so I, I just don't. I don't really get that, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, I, I, I just think it's not the right game to risk it. I, now, give me one. Lindelof's ball distribution at CDM is is is, is much, much better. Um, will he use it? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Fred did have a bad game. I'm not going to lie there. But it is a risk to play Lindelof as a CDM when he's he's only had a cameo there. Um, I I just think that... If Ten Hag does it, props to him. Because then it would be Lindelof for CDM. Um, and then it would be um, 
probably um, Sabitz and Bruno uh, or Fred and Bruno. I don't know. Uh, probably Sabitz and Bruno. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I don't know, guys. I don't know, guys. Um, I, I just think that <coughs> what I noticed, especially with actually in those games, a lot of people saying, "Oh, play this player here and play this player there," and it's like that player has not even played ninety minutes in that position. How can you? And yet they might have a good game, but you need to be careful that you you don't hype someone who hasn't played there for a bit on one game and expect that they're going to be just great for it might work like for example Luke Shaw at center back at a center back but in fairness Luke Shaw he's played left sided center back before for Manchester United so it wasn't really new in a in a back three sorry so it wasn't com completely new he's sort of played that position before Lindelof has played you know has, has had some CDM training at Benfica but he's not played that for you. so I don't know. I still think it's a bit of a risk, um, but I can see why. And maybe if I'm wrong, let, let me know in the chat because by the, by the time you guys are watching this, the the lineup will be out, and maybe he puts Lindelof in and, and drops Fred. Um, but I think that would be a little bit harsh to to Fred, and I think that I just wouldn't take any risk in this game because Lindelof is a great he's a great passer, better passer than Fred is, but he can also get bullied. And Leeds will be very, especially anyone that be very physical in this game. He can be bullied. He can be shrugged off the ball. You know, he's not as physical um, as as Fred. He, he he's not. You know, so I, I I just think that we I just think that um um I mean I guess you could potentially say you play Lindelof, Fred, and Bruno. That is a possibility. He drops a bit into the branch, but um. I would rather submit to play the CDM role than than, than Lindelof personally. That's that that's that that's that's what I would do. So um I'll put Sabitsu in here. Okay. And obviously bear in mind, this guy is playing for a contract. Um, I mean, maybe he still wants to go to Bayern, I don't know, but like we're hoping to see some stuff from this guy. I'm hoping that Sabitsu balls because we need more midfielders. And this and Sabitza is talented, you know. So and we need and we desperately need more midfielders at Manchester United, you know. So I'll put Fred there. Obviously, Bruno will come in, who is just absolutely um a powerhouse in terms of his fitness. You know, whatever you say about Fred and Bruno, at the end of the day, they always stay fit. I don't know what what they feed them in Brazil, but they always stay, stay fit. They are rarely injured, you know. Um, so I think that here's where things get interesting. Much like the Fred discussion, you know, do does Manchester United um, drop uh, Wout Weghorst? Now, I still don't think we're getting the best out of Wout. Um you know, you need to. It's like a Lukaku situation. It's great ship. He presses well, but you need to cross into the box. We don't cross a lot, you know, um, and that's because we play. I mean, uh, Sancho. I think, you know, I think Sancho would. Sancho is Sancho is a proper winger. Um, and I think Wambasaka here being playing will actually help him actually because he'd be, be more defensive, will be exposed because he doesn't track back sometimes. Um, but. You know, Sancho will try and find the forward. You know, that's his thing. Rashford does not. Rashford, Rashford, and and fair play because Rashford's scoring goals. But Rashford will always want to cut in and come inside and try and take a shot. So he's not going to get any delivery from here. So really, who is going to supply Wout Weghorst? Either from a corner or possibly from Sancho because Ganacho is Ganacho is also inside. I mean, I don't know why United play. We we United actually don't. <coughs> I can't remember the last time United actually produced an actual true winger. We play to, we create Rashford, Greenwood, um, Ganacho. Like we create so many inverted inside forwards. We don't create any wingers anymore. And it's really strange to me. Why don't we create any true wingers? I don't know any true wingers in the academy that we have. Alanga's, again, same thing. They're all the same ilk. Like I don't get it, you know. Um, or, or any pure and outright strikers like academy wise like we 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 produce good inverted forwards but actually out and out strikers or true wingers we we just don't and i just find that strange we've not produced any in a while 
you know um yeah it's strange but i think that um you know because the alternative is that you play rashford as a number 9 and you play um you play Ganacho on the left and Sancho on the right, and you go at them. Um, we could do that. I don't think you necessarily get the best out of Rashford if you do if you do that. And I do generally think that if you um, if you start Wout, um, uh, you can um, you uh, with Sancho. He'll, he'll Sancho will deliver balls into him. So I actually think that Wout will start. I think Sancho will start this time, and I think Rash will be on the left. And then, of course, you know, you have because you, you need bench options. You need bench options. And I think that Ganacho, so far from what I've seen so far, I think he's a talented kid, but I think so far from what I've seen is that he makes more of an impact when he comes from the bench. He makes more impact when he comes from the bench. And so I think that, you know, if things are, are getting difficult, you then bring on Ganacho for for uh, for White Wegors and you move Rashford to the um to the middle. That's what I think. So I'll just put this in here. And then we put Sancho on the right. And then we put Rashford on the left. That's what I think. That's that so this is what I think the starting lineup will be. Um, you know. Plus or minus, plus or minus Garnacho, plus or minus Lindelof. But I think this would arguably United's strongest eleven going away to Leeds. Um, so it is, it is gonna be a difficult game. It is gonna be a difficult game. And do I think Manchester United can win? Eh, I mean, we, in fairness, you know, we tend, we we have tend to spank Leeds. I mean, this is why I would, I would, we missed McTominay, man. I don't know what it is, but when McTominay plays against Leeds, we win. So I wish McTominay was fit for this game because McTominay just... I don't know what it is. He drives forward. He does his thing. He he, he, he has a hatred. I don't know what it is, but McTominay just loves cooking these guys, you know. And so we actually... For the first time I say this to world, we actually miss Scott McTominay. We really, really do. Um, what are my score predictions? Um, well, 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 well. Um, my score predictions are I think I still think despite the the defense I think still think we'll concede I think Leeds will come out they'll be aggressive they will have the tenacity um to cause us problems um but to be honest when I look on reflection on that United game yes they caught us out um napping and that's the key thing here really is that United need to be switched on from the beginning you know, you're away from home, you need to be on your guard, you need to be switched on. Don't let them soccer punch you. When they soccer punched us in the beginning of the first half and the second half. If that didn't happen, we win the game. Because we still scored, we, despite doing that, we still scored two goals and, and took a point. So I just think that if we are switched on, and obviously defensively Wan-Bissaka will help, um, you know, realistically... United had, I think I had 24, 27 shots in that game. You know, um, United will have more shots. United will have more um, possession. United will have more attempts. You know, all we need to do is just fix up defensively, be more switched on. And I think actually, I think we win the game. I don't think it'll be a big score, but I think possibly um, this time, I think it'll be 2 1 to Manchester United. That's my score. And make sure, you guys, get your score prediction in the comments, guys. Um, you know, thanks for those who are obviously watching up until this point, you know, so, but yeah, get your score prediction in, guys. Um, get your score predictions in. Who will United win? And also let me know in the comments, in the chat, was I was I correct about the starting lineup? Was, was I correct about the starting lineup as well? So yeah, let me know. Um, but anyway, guys, that is my match preview. Thank you for everyone who's in the chat, who's getting involved. Make sure you like the vid. Make sure you comment below the video. It helps with the algorithm. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Uh, and I will hopefully be live later for a positive match reaction. Have a nice day, everyone. And cheers.